Oké, shalom, 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 kom je ze alle. Koholoi, mijn laai, hou op, ba, shimia, wa, shai, ba, shimmer, ka, ha, kotash. De ba, honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do rule well, the by the Spirit, taught us this beautiful truth, and just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwa, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, ba, shimia, wa, shai, to the best of their ability. Jachana, the waf, just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And... As you can see, these uh, pictures of um, weddings. And the reason why I brought this up, I was just at the store a little while ago, and I'm kicking it with, uh, you know, there was a few people in the store that just, you know, we was having this conversation. And a young lady that, you know, work in the store, she's actually a Palestinian. Or at least that's what she says, you know what I'm saying? She's the first generation of American Palestinian. And she's, you know, <laughs> she acts so much like a, a nigga, to the point where you know you wouldn't really wouldn't believe it but she do look like them you know but we don't go by looks you know because um if you are from the seed line of abraham isaac and jacob you are an israelite no matter what you look like now her family is from that region they speak that you know the language she's the first generation of american being here and it's actually kind of off for her to be in a store working basically in a damn liquor store <laughs> you know just in a store around jake so-called black men coming in you know what i'm saying because that's generally you know just so-called black people in general but a lot of so-called black men you know coming in and she's behind the counter late at night you know because generally those countries they don't allow their women to be out that time of night like that but like i said she's this uh, supposedly first generation palestinian or whatever and they falling off here, though, you know, in the region where I'm at, they're falling off because I've been noticing that, you know, the, the, the daughters, the mama, the auntie, everybody got to try and come in and try and help these businesses out that they have because they own most of the stuff. Because the scripture says that, you know, these these nations will be, you know, above us. We will be the tail and they will be the head. And, you know, we go to them for services. We got to go to them for, you know, generally the stuff that we need. But they have their women now working in these stores you know, um, handling, generally they handle cashiering, but she's in a hood by herself. <laughs> there's not, there's no, even not one, of even their men there. And I don't think she even get down with them like that, but she, she's, and matter of fact, she's actually with a Jake. Her man is a Jake. So the, the subject that we was on was, you know, talking about marriage. And, um, she was like, yeah, you know, I'm not married yet. And this, 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 and this. And so, me and a guy, you know, on the other side of the counter, of course, you know, we kicking it, you know what I'm saying? And that, but you know, I, you know, the scriptures always kick in, Holy Spirit kick in, you know what I'm saying? And I just, just ran with the spirit. I was like, well, you know, America is not, I, I told her, I, you know, Hey, the, the, the marriage that America pushes, I said, you know, that's not in the Bible, right? And, you know, she's kind of like, you know, looking like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, you know, there is no such thing in the Bible where a man is getting on bended knee and asking a woman to marry her, like how America shows on TV. And I said, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, in the Bible where there is a priest and he's saying, you know, now I pronounce you man or wife, you know, um, you now you may kiss the bride. And she was like, you know what? Because she, you know, she like, you know what? I, you're right. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> I said, so, you know, you're really what you're doing is, and a guy behind the counter with me, he was agreeing. He was like, you're just getting a third party um, involved in your relationship. That's all you're doing. You're signing paperwork for them to get involved in your relationship. And that's all that you're doing. You know, so I went into, um, I, you know, I told her, you know, because, you know, a lot of those Palestinians, they be knowing, like, from a, you know, from Ishmael direction, you know what I'm saying, um, or Arab descent, you know, they, they know scriptures. They do know that, and they're, even in their country, because she was telling, you know, how her aunties and her mom and them, they don't even speak English like that, you know what I'm saying? She was like, they be looking at her like, you know, you're just a damn heathen. And, and you know, they try and get her to keep some of the customs of the, the old world, so to speak. And she was like, you know, she knew what I was talking about when it says, you know what I'm saying, a man goes off into a woman, and that's that. You know, I told her, I was like, hey, the, the very first man that you supposed to, that you got with, that's supposed to be your husband for life. And she was like, you know what? You're right. I know that. You know, that's one more. You know, I know that. I, you know, she was like, she really knew. 
<laughs> but, you know, of course, she, I don't know. I don't know if she's been hopping. But, hey, she's the one of them, like I said, first generation Palestinians, you know, because, you know, she be in the store. She's, you know, she's got like these huge boobs and, and that's a real accent. You know, like she's, you know, nice looking lady. And she, she, when I say she showed them babies, she showed them babies. <laughs> for real so every dude and coming in the store is like god damn what a girl what the you know what i'm saying so she knows what she's doing but she's she has that american thinking and that's what i was telling her i was like you know well hey you know um you you, you probably would be better you would be better off going with your own culture than the american culture she was like yeah my grandmother and my mom and my you know my uncles and dad and you know so she know that what she's doing basically is some American shit and it's off. So, you know, I just told her, you know, hey, all this American stuff, this wedding stuff, I, I, you know, because she was looking at it from a, 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 well, I'm not married yet. You know, I'm like, you know, because she's looking at it from an aspect of American so-called white man. And I told her straight up, I'm like, so you need the, the so-called white man's approval to tell you that you can love somebody? You know, and she was like, you know what? You're right. You're so right. And I know my customs and my family and how we do. But anyway, I, I actually um, put in here. Let me see here. Let's go to all here. So I, I just typed in is American marriage in the Bible. And then, you know, they have um, what constitutes marriage according to the Bible. It says there is absolutely no biblical basis for an unmarried couple to have sex and then decide and then declare themselves married let's get this let's go off into a little bit of this and this is what we be talking about because you going um a man coming into a woman that's it now you can have a celebration i was like even explaining that to her i was like you know a lot of um you know um, marriages you know there's a celebration because there's life that's about to be produced it's all about life you see what I'm saying? But here in the Americas, this motherfucker, man, you can have sex with your spouse on a, on a marriage night on your honeymoon, what they call it. And she can have an abortion the very same same next morning. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it says the Bible nowhere explicitly states at what point God considers a man and a woman to be married. Due to the Bible's silence on this matter, identifying the precise moment a man and woman are married in God's eyes is complex undertaking. No, it, it's it's in the scriptures. You know, because um basically, let me let's just go into it. Let's see here. Let's get um cuz sex constitutes marriage, man. It's in there. It's just the the American shit. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> For real. It's not in there. Let me see. Uh Yeah, hey, well, this is going on into our forefather Judah and um Tamar. Because he went into her. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you go up into that story. You know, that particular story. Now, you know, I guess still it will have to go down as him being, you know, um, her husband. But it says he knew her no more after he had sex with her. He was probably like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have done what I, you know, that's the story. You had to go off into that. That's another lesson. But let me um, let me put it in, in this um, like this. Uh. Hmm. Okay, well, let me, I'm probably wording it wrong. It's like it. This is what I wanted. This is Genesis 24 and 67. And Isaac, matter of fact, let's get a little bit more on it. Let's go into it, go into it. Now, this is the, um, if you're familiar with the account where um, Abraham basically told, you know, he, he, you know, had his, one of his servants swear to go to get a wife for his son, Isaac, 
from his own people. He didn't want him to marry no one from the Canaanites. He didn't want, you know, uh, our lineage, lineage or, you know, he didn't. He just didn't want our forefather to go through a Canaanite, which would be a Hamite, which would be an African. That's how you know that we're not African. So he went through, and this is where, you know, Rachel comes into play at. Isaac, you know, um, um, our foremother had passed away. And, you know, Isaac was pretty much sad. And like I said, again, Abraham, he sent one, the main, main servant of the household. You know, he made him put his hand under the thigh. That was a way of um, going off into um, like a covenant, so to speak, or a, a promise, so to speak, to go and search out the land of Laban, you know, our forefathers before Abraham came out of, you know, he wanted Isaac to have a wife of our, you know, our people. So here we go right here. It says, um, so now he, he went through, he went through everything that he went through. If you go through the story, it's a beautiful story too. It's a real nice story. You know, um, that servant prayed to the Lord. If the, you know, this woman would come out and I'm going to ask her, you know, to give me a drink of water. If she give me a drink of water and she water also my camel and my flock, so to speak, you know, then I would know what's up. So like you, man, the women been tripping in the hood lately, man. The police been called. All day. And it's just household. The household was just number loud ass six, man. God damn. Anyway, so like you. But this is the story of Rebecca. And you're not going to see Isaac getting on no bended knee, asking her to marry me. You know, um, I got a, a $60,000 ring. Here's your dress. There is, you know what I'm saying? Um, you got maid of honors. You got all these chicks that need to lose weight to get in they, get their big asses in these dresses in these different colors. They got to get their hair done. They got to order this big ass, stupid ass cake that's probably worth just as much as the ring. You know, none of that stuff is in the scriptures where you got to go in debt to get married. And then, you know, you with somebody for a month, two months, three months, a year. And now you stress because you still got to work and get yourself out of the debt that you put yourself in for this American marriage shit, man. It's not in the scriptures. But anyway, Genesis 24, I'm going to start here. It says, and Isaac, now this is this is the servant coming back with our foremother. He's coming back with her. She agreed to go. She agreed to go, <laughs> you know. So if you get that beautiful story, like I said, you got to get into that story because we don't have the time right now. But it says, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide at the evening tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold, the camels were coming. So now his servant is coming back home. He's he done, done what Abraham told him to do. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac. She lighted off the camel. She jumped down off that goddamn camel. She, she got down quick. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. Now what are you women doing now today? You're uncovering yourself. All we're seeing is ass cheeks, tits, and, and a loud ass mouth. Right? It says... And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And check out what Isaac done. Check out what Isaac done. The servant told, they told Isaac what he done, right? Check out what he done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent took and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforter after his mother's death. Now, where is that marriage vow? Where did he get on bended knee and give her a big ass ring? Where's this huge celebration where you got to go on? We're going on a carnival cruise. We're going to travel, you know, the seven seas. We're going to come back. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Jake just out here just, just stressed. Stressed. Instead of y'all just going ahead, you already and big. Y'all done already slept together. You're married already. Now, you want to have a party? Good. Throw a party, man. Throw a party at the house. Bro. Invite all the family over. This is my husband. But for the so-called white man to tell you, and, 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 and I'm telling you, man, hey, the, the nigga woman, is, um, all the women in America is crazy when it comes to this fairy tale shit. That, 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 that dress, 
that you're going to put up in the closet. Try and pass it on to your granddaughter, which you ain't going to more likely not have because you're going to have abortion after abortion after abortion when it comes to America's a custom. You're going through all this shit to not even have no kids, man. That's what marriage is really about. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not going to keep this long. I just, <laughs> I, I just, you know, wanted to bring it out because when, when I was at the store and I'm kicking it and I just had to just, you know, scriptures, man. All praises to you, Hope Hashim Yahusha, man, for the for for the scriptures, man. Because it was a regular conversation, but you know, I had to cut into her, like you know, well, hey, you know, because she was like, well, I'm the only, I'm an only child, and I'm not married. I'm like, but you know, you know, because she got this guy's, ta she got this guy's big ass Jake, this dude like six five, you know, niggas in the hood know, but I don't know how she met him, but she got the guy's ta um name tattooed on her, this big ass titty that she shows every day. You know, so I'm telling her like, well, hey, America's way of marriage is, is not um, biblical, it's not scriptural, it's not. You don't need the so-called white man to tell you about who you with. If that man done, 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 you know, knocking you down, that's your husband. That's it. Now, if you want to have a party the following weekend and say, hey, well, you know, hey, this is who I'm with. You know, I'm celebrating this way. Well, you know, we're going to be together. I want, you know, hey. But I told her straight up, hey, the, fir the very first man that you got with, that was supposed to be your husband for life. And she she said right off the jump, she was like, you're right. You're right. Because she knows that's the custom of her people in Palestine. So, you know, I just wanted to touch on this. So, you know, um, you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, man, hey, you Israelites. Don't let the so-called white man tell you who you're supposed to love and not love and you need to come through and get paperwork and permission from him. That shit is not scriptural, man. Get away from that shit because it's actually, it's really sickening and, and it's a part of idolatry because you're going before some wicked ass priest that's probably dealing with some, some little, 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 little toddler or some shit. <laughs> He's, you know, crossing his chest and head with the cross symbol talking about now I bless you and now you're pronounce you and even these wicked ass T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollars and all these Christian pastors man they don't know um um because uh, I was just looking at a video yesterday uh, matter of fact that's that's the spirit because the brothers was going up into um what's this guy um Tazariak I think is his name Captain Tazariak from um ISUPK uh, with this guy on there talking about some damn marriage and in idolatry, I mean, no, not um, idolatry, but um, adultery. You looking at another woman? Hey, look, man, if that woman is not married and she ain't with nobody, you can check her out and you can run up on her and be like, "Yo, what up?" Adultery is if you're dealing with another man's wife. If she got a man and you dealing with her, that's adultery. But if she's single and you got a wife, you got a wife, but you, but you looking, you checking out another woman that's single, that's not idolatry, man. I mean, I keep saying idolatry. Still, it goes with that too, Salakia. But that's um, um, that's not adultery. You can get with that woman. Now, is it wise to do it in the Americas? Is it wise to do it in the so-called white man system? No, it's not. But you know what? Hey, people are starting to abandon the so-called white man's ways, man. Because he don't want you to produce. He don't want you to reproduce. He don't want you with no, no um, different women. Because he knows that if you get with four or five women, you're going to be able to impregnate them all at one time while he's dealing with his one white woman, so-called white woman. She wants to get, you know, her, her, you know, her Ph.D. and all this other shit. She's having her very first child at 42, 43. This so-called white man know if you got um, five to six 20 year olds, 21, 22 year olds and you knocking them all down. That's five babies. With the nine months. Within the next year, you done pumped out 10, 50 men. Ch shit, within 10 years, you can have 30 <laughs> kids or so. He knows that. He wants to keep you on a low level. He doesn't want you to reproduce because that's what the Lord told us to do. He told us to be fruitful and to multiply. And if you live in the so-called white man's system and his way of doing things, you're not going to do that. You're going to diminish. This man is, is pushing you to the abortion center. He's pushing you to Planned Parenthood. 
He's not saying, you know, now he'll have you put your hand on the Bible and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We're a Christian nation. But when it comes to that be fruitful and multiply part, oh, no, 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 the earth is overpopulated. We have to, you see, um, Kamala, um, Kamala Harris, he just made that gaffe the other day. You know, where they got her out here, where she's talking about um, uh, um, depopulating you Negroes. And y'all don't even understand what's going on, man. So, just wanted to touch on this for a hot second. I didn't want to keep it long. Kind of went a little longer than, you know, I mean, it's the spirit, though, man. Hey, look, the so-called white man and his marriage system, that's some bullshit. And I'm going to leave it at that. With that, Kwame Yashala.